Well, I'm interested that people always want to ask about the autobio uh, autobiographical elements of it because one thing I noticed from the, the blowjob scene is in the background there's this director's chair that looks like it's a gift from the kids or something like that was handmade. Yeah. And what that made me realize throughout the entire film is that the one thing that's never shown is that any actual directing. Like for something that's about a director, you're really not seeing any of the craft. You're seeing more of just the promotion or the, the obligations even. Well, she kind of bosses her daughter. Yeah, kind of, yeah. She's kind of directing her daughter um, in a kind of pathetic attempt to have some kind of control. But yeah, I imagine that red director's chair, it's cool that you notice things like that. See, I'm much more, I can really talk about this movie in a much more <laughs> articulate way. Uh, it's only last year. So, I imagine that she bought that director's chair for herself. Oh, really? Yeah. And that, but her name, of course, would never be on it. So she sort of directed her kids to <laughs> tape her name on the chair. Um, and she would sort of imagine herself on a set where she had a chair with her name on it. But Simon, who played the fathers in Only, plays the husband. Yeah. And I'm, so that's like another a nice loop around. Of course, it had to be him. But he agreed to be in the film without knowing what that scene was going to be. So I think that's pretty cool. Um, I like that, you know, people that don't really ask too many questions, just say yes and dive in. There was a, a quick story I heard about Lars von Trier interviewing a DP, and uh, there was a meeting place, um, and it was a, whatever, the, the DP went to the location for the, for the interview, and there was a note saying, um, go to the beach, and then directions to the beach, and then at the beach there was a sign that said, jump in. <laughs> that was the interview. And is that what you're kind of expecting out of the people that work with you? Yeah. I really expect people to just jump in. That's a lot to expect, isn't it? Um, yeah, I really, uh, I'm up for the adventure of it, you know? And I, I do think, I mean, I'm, I do try to answer everyone's questions, and, but I want, them, I want to hold on to the mystery and the discovery and, and all of that part of the process. And the not knowing and the risking failure and I guess low budget affords me that, and I think I'm, I started step by step. I took on as much as I thought I could. You know, I, I acted for a really long time, and then I started producing, and I produced for 12 years a lot of other people's work. And I, when I started directing, I was doing a lot of co-directing, and, and then I just very gradually moved into directing myself, and it's been a 30-year journey, and I am, I'm, I'm sort of cautious in that I want to do what I feel I'm sort of ready for, but at the same time, I want to always take really, really big risks. And I don't know if I could do the films with the same, to the same, with the same degree of freedom if I'm getting money from, a lot of money from other people. It's too much of a responsibility for me. Then I think I would become very aware of the result and I would be very keen on the result working, um, the product sort of being successful in the marketplace or whatever. Whereas the way I've made only, um, which I co-directed with Simon Reynolds, Modra, and I'm a good person, I'm a bad person, is I have no idea these films are going to work. I'm just going to try and do something that is as truthful as possible. And if it catches fire, then I'll react to that. Like now I think I'm going to self-distribute, I'm a good person, I'm a bad person. But it had to start with getting into the Toronto Film Festival. Had it not got into the Toronto International Film Festival, we wouldn't be talking right now. <laughs>